pleasure to me all at last and welcome back to films I'm willing to talk about again and now we're on a bit of a continuation here because yesterday I've talked about the combination of Shrek 1 and 2 from 2001 and 2004 but now it's time to talk a bit about the other sequels that had come around I'm specifically going to be talking about Shrek the third from 2007 and in 2010 there was a fourth film Shrek Forever After. I'm gonna get started with the third one, obviously, so... As you can see right here, this is what the poster looks like. And in the year 2007, a time where I actually ended up moving into this house, and I have lived here since then. But the thing is, is that, in terms of talking about a third film from the Shrek franchise, it certainly was no surprise that DreamWorks was willing to make as many films as possible to keep the story going and to keep the cash flowing. Cash grabs are done in every film industry and in every sort of media outlet possible. And so, this is certainly no surprise, but yet in contrast to what we saw in the first and second films, while it did earn a pretty good box office success and some good ratings by critics, a lot of which were mixed at first, but eventually people started to see the good in this film other than what the first two brought us. But it is certainly no surprise that according to most by this point, that three is never always as good. And so this is just another unfortunate example of a three in a franchise that just so happens to not do as good as the first two. And a lot of people weren't really expecting a third film in the Shrek franchise to begin with. I myself have seen two films in the Shrek franchise and then there came along a third, which we eventually got on DVD, and I still have somewhere in the house. But the point is, is that, as opposed to what we saw in the first two films, the third one goes in a bit of a different direction. Just like with the second film picking up where the first film left off, the third one picks up where the second one left off. With Shrek and Fiona resting inside the castle, in bed, obviously, early in the morning, after everything comes down to the point where they're finally accepted, as an ogre couple, pretty much. And after the defeat of the fairy godmother and pretty much everything else relative to that, something really big takes place right here. Something that we never quite expected to take place in a DreamWorks film or just a CG kids film by any means. Because naturally, CG films or animated films are technically geared towards children, but we have seen a lot of things take place that just is so unexpected that it's unreal. Shrek and Fiona are actually pregnant. <sighs> now, I don't know about you, but that was unbelievably concerning. Like, how is that even allowed in a kid's film? DreamWorks uh, I don't even know anymore, just, let's just go with the flow, shall we? Okay, so anyways, what happens is that, well, they're rudely awakened by Donkey and the dragon's children. But, yeah, again, let's just move on. Okay, so, they make a good day's worth of work right now, and Shrek is honored as the king of the kingdom far away. And there's a bit of a montage that takes place where Shrek tries to do things in a kingly manner, but isn't always successful, unfortunately. And so, as unfortunate as that sounds, that doesn't necessarily seem to be the worst thing that happens because Shrek eventually finds a ship that actually goes back to the swamp in Far, Far Away, which is quite a bit of a ride but throughout the oceans and seasides that are pretty much present, Shrek would eventually get there. But upon actually boarding this ship alongside Donkey and Puss in Boots, there is in fact some urgent news that Fiona decides to share before Shrek leaves. Fiona's pregnant. Yeah, enough said about that. But that is the part that actually scares Shrek. There's a moment where a nightmare is actually shown to give us a bit of a scenario about how 
it might actually feel. And I actually was very, like, brought in as close as possible to the franchise. So, just that one moment alone where there's a montage and Shrek arrives at the Swamp House, pretty much, only to find a bunch of babies crawling around here and there. That one moment alone was a bit of a nightmare, but the thing is, is that, I don't know about you, but this is the one moment, just the, those couple of minutes right there in that film alone, of all the parts of the franchise that have ever been associated with my whole life, Shrek the Third, the nightmare scene, is what brought me as close to the franchise as possible. And a lot of people might be in agreement here because Shrek the Third proposed a huge change to the different character arcs that we never expected to see in our lives. So, if you thought it was big enough that Shrek and Fiona were to have children and the children were about to be part of a franchise like this, it really makes you wonder. I mean, well, would I ever have to talk about this stuff? YouTube would not allow a lot of things anymore. And I'm sure that if I just said it, even for a brief second, I'd get age restricted or even removed from the channel permanently. So, let's just pretty much just end it here, okay? Shrek the Third is about Shrek and Fiona having children. End of story. The year 2007 pretty much comes and goes. And we eventually get to see some other stuff take place, including a short film known as Shrek the Halls in 2008. And I've seen that happen pretty much. I've seen that on cable for the most part. And I used to record it a lot when I was a lot younger. So 2008, Shrek the Halls. Nothing much I could say about that. But then eventually comes the fourth film in the series, Shrek Forever After. This is the point in time where it takes place a little while after the events of Shrek the Third. Shrek and Fiona have children, they have a lot of friends around, and they eventually have themselves a unique birthday party to take place. But it's this point in time where Shrek eventually realizes the many troubles of trying to live a human life in the same way that we've been able to see with plenty of other stuff. In most franchises, we've never quite seen much past the third film in a franchise because it's like we've said before, three isn't always as good. And so, with the fourth film, there's little to no expectations here. But you know what? I feel like that this one was very interesting for the time that it was released in. In the year 2010, which I've deemed to be the greatest year that's ever happened to me. And it's not just a personal thing, it's an all out thing. But Shrek Forever After, at least, in contrast to what we've seen from the previous three films, holds little to no expectations because all you need to know here is the fact that Shrek, Fiona, the kids, Donkey, Puss in Boots, Gingerbread Man, Pinocchio, everybody are all, in fact, together, trying to bond with each other and have a good social life like anybody should ever have to. But unfortunately, it goes down to the point where the stress causes Shrek to realize how much simpler it was to live a life out there on the swamp, scaring people to death, and not having to live a life married and as a parent. And so, this eventually forces Shrek to really give quite the proof that everybody needs, that they all need to back off. But what's even more strange about this whole entire thing is that, well, you really gotta admit, the entire party sequence that happens in this one scene alone in the film is unbelievably amazing. Like, I especially like the part where the kid goes, do the roar! Like, that was quite a meme of a lifetime. And you know what? I've been seeing that happen a little more often than now. So it means that a lot of fellow seekers out there, like maybe you, are using this meme for good measure. So, I'm especially excited about what we could expect later on, but Shrek Forever After is mostly about Shrek having to deal with life like a normal person, but eventually comes across the all-time famous devious gold silk lacer Rumple Stiltskin. And you know what? This is where the film really kicks it up a notch because 
As it turns out, Rumpelstiltskin invites Shrek over to have a few drinks, but then to eventually propose a contract. A contract that will guarantee Shrek the old life of an ogre once again. And so, this unfortunately dupes Shrek to sign this contract. But then, this is where it really kicks into high gear. This film gives us nothing else that the other films have given us so far. Shrek Forever After puts Shrek in an alternate dimension. Yeah, an alternate dimension of far, far away. Ogres are hunted, Rumpelstiltskin's the ruler, and Shrek literally has no allies. Fiona, Donkey, Puss in Boots, Gingerbread Man, Pinocchio, the Three Little Pigs, everybody is no longer in Shrek's life. It's almost like everything that's ever happened anywhere before any of the films even happened. It's almost like with Shrek Zero, pretty much. Which is not a thing, but still, you just gotta imagine. What would a Shrek Zero be like? But in any case, Shrek is now in an alternate reality, a far, far away, where an old life of being nothing but a terrifying, smelly ogre is very much apparent. And I really gotta say that the voice work in terms of Mike Myers voicing Shrek for pretty much the last time is very well done in this part. Shrek is being hunted by a lot of hunters, Rumpelstiltskin's the ruler, and therefore the main antagonist of the film itself. But eventually things get down to the point where the reality that Shrek lived before signing the contract begins to come apart. And then eventually, after Rumpelstiltskin is defeated, life comes back to normal, Shrek and Fiona live happily ever after again. So, four times in a row we pretty much have right here. And this just pretty much makes you wonder, what would a part five be like? Well, believe it or not, we've actually been teased a lot with the reboot of the Shrek franchise as a whole. With the all new film that would have come out in 2019, 2020, and 2021, 2022, and we still have none of that at all. That's probably because it's not even real. That's because DreamWorks had been very busy with the How to Train Your Dragon series. Maybe I'll talk a little bit about that soon. And that lasted throughout the 2010s as well. So, Shrek lived from 2001 to 2010 pretty much in the main franchise. And the franchise of How to Train Your Dragon pretty much picked up where Shrek Forever After left off in 2010. And then went all the way to 2020. So, another nice 10 years almost of a franchise taking place. But in terms of other things that Shrek has, you really gotta take a look at the 4D ride, which was actually taken down recently. So, it's yet another example of the timing being perfect right here. And so, being that Shrek 4D at Universal Orlando is now done for, closed, and demolished, who even knows what'll take its place? Hopefully something good. Because I will be going back to Universal Orlando pretty soon. Not sure when, but we do have tons of things out there that we'll need to do at some point before we even consider planning a trip like this. And not to mention books, apparel, toys, video games, including a few that James Rolfe of Angry Video Game Nerd had actually reviewed last year. So not necessarily perfectly timed, but hey, wins win. But anyways, that's it. That's the Fre Shrek franchise in a nutshell. Four films, a few shorts, and some other things. And not to mention the Shrek 4D movie itself has actually been remastered in 2013 and eventually became part of the special edition of the Shrek DVD. So, that's pretty much an easy bonus. Kind of like with Back to the Future when they released a special edition DVD complete with the Back to the Future The Rides footage. So... We're probably going to see that happen a lot these days if these rides are going to be torn down. So, in any case, that's just pretty much all I'm able to do here. And so, hopefully it's Shrek-tastic enough for you to get to know that this is in fact my take on the franchise as a whole. 
If I wanted to give each of them a score, it probably wouldn't be all too easy because each of them are very well done in their own right. Apart from Shrek the Third and its super surprising turnaround in terms of character arc buildup and whatnot, but you still gotta know the fact that it was a pretty good franchise while it lasted. From 2001 to 2010, that was a pretty huge part of my childhood. And when I grew up with these films, as they grew up alongside me, I really got to know them a lot better as I got older. But then of course, How to Train Your Dragon came along and stole its popularity, almost overnight. It got so well that I practically demanded that there would be a sequel within just a couple of years. Like I said, I'll talk about each of these films independently, probably, instead of combined like what I had done with the episodes revolving around the Shrek film. So, if you want to see more, go down to my channel and make sure that you like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media, and stay on the Hollywood side.